What is up my beautiful, amazing and gorgeous people? Welcome to another one of these videos that I, Victor Dozel, make with so much love for each and every one of you. In this video, we'll go over what infrastructure as code is and why it's important for the tech and software industry. Let's get the party started. Let's go back in time to 1992. Meet Timmy. Timmy is the lead infrastructure engineer at a small company called Poopy Inc. Poopy Inc. is trying to create the greatest web application to ever exist. In the 1990s, in order for companies to create a website for customers to visit, they would have to buy computers, several of them. When Poopy Inc. was starting, Timmy only needed two computers to make the web application work. These computers would have to be ordered from somewhere, and then they would have to be set up most likely somewhere in the building of the company headquarters. Once the computers arrived, were set up and fully running, the web application could start to run and people around the world could visit the website. As you can imagine, just the idea of ordering these computers and setting them up could take several days to weeks. We will call this problem number one, which is the time and cost of acquiring new computers and getting rid of computers. Because these computers would have to be maintained by someone in Poopy Inc., if any of these computers suffered any damage, Poopy Inc.'s website has the potential to go down for some time by either waiting for somebody to fix a problem or ordering new computers. We will call this problem number two, which is a time to set up and maintain computers. Poopy Inc. did not want to risk having any downtime at all, and so they ordered two more computers as backup, in case the original two computers went down. Now Poopy Inc. has a total of four computers at its headquarters. This increases the reliability of their web application because now they have a copy of each. The bad thing here is that having four computers instead of two also increases the cost of maintaining all of them. One year later, Poopy Inc. has grown to be a great company and in order to meet customers' demands, they now have 16 computers to have their web application up and running. Not only that, but the software engineers at Poopy Inc. need a special place to test their code and this special place needs to look and feel just like production. They call this special place a staging environment. Because this staging environment needs to look and feel just like production, it needs the same 16 computers. This means that Timmy has to get an additional 16 computers ordered and set up the exact same way as the previous 16 computers in order to have this special staging environment. We will call this problem number three, which is replicating environments. Once the additional 16 computers arrive, Timmy now needs to remember exactly how the computers in the production, aka live environment, were set up, so that he can set up the ones in the staging environment the exact same way. We will call this problem number four, which is forgetting steps to configure environments in the exact same way. Timmy finds this to be massively painful. Once everything is said and done, between the production and staging environments, there are now 32 computers that Poopy Inc. has to take care of. What a pain! It is now 2020, 28 years later. As the company continued to grow in scale, Poopy Inc. eventually got to manage 1,000 computers for its production environment. Because the staging environment needs to be exactly like production, the staging environment needs another 1,000 computers. Not only that, but the software engineers at Poopy Inc. decided they need another special place to test their code, called the test environment. This test environment does not need to be exactly like production, so it can get away with only having 250 additional computers. We will call this problem number five, which is growing and scaling. Timmy is now completely exhausted and Poopy Inc. is frustrated and bleeding money on maintenance costs. They do not want to spend any more money having to set up and maintain all of these computers. Thankfully for them, in 2020, they are now in the age of cloud computing, where every company around the world can use amazing platforms, aka cloud providers, such as AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and several others. These cloud computing companies, again, cloud providers, allow anyone to use computers that are set up and maintained by them. As you can tell, this allows companies to save a buttload of money. Through these cloud providers, Timmy is able to set up a new computer in just a couple of minutes through a few clicks on a web page. Not only that, but if Timmy ever wanted to remove a computer because it's no longer needed, he would be able to do that almost instantly. Again, through a few clicks on a simple web page. This solves problem number one, which is the time and cost of acquiring new computers or getting rid of computers. 
Additionally, whenever something goes wrong with a computer itself, the cloud computing companies solve every issue without Poopy Inc. ever noticing that there was an issue. This solves problem number two, which is the setup and maintenance. Oh man, I can see Timmy is getting happier and happier. As you can see, cloud computing companies are pretty freaking magical. Solving both of the previous problems saves Poopy Inc. a ton of cash. However, I think we can do a lot better than this. There are three problems yet to solve. This is where infrastructure as code comes in. So, to recap on the situation so far, Poopy Inc. started the company by ordering computers and maintaining them in their headquarters. They then moved to cloud computing, which allowed them to set up computers easily with just a few clicks. The next step in this whole thing is to remove the clicking altogether in order to be able to add computers as we need much more quickly. From this point forward, we'll refer to these computers we've been talking about as infrastructure. Infrastructure as code allows engineers to write code, essentially a file full of text, that tells a computer to talk with the cloud providers and ask them to set up as many computers as the engineers need, with the exact requirements that these computers should have. Because now setting up infrastructure can be done through code, this means that the process of setting up computers is a highly collaborative process that anybody can do and keep track of. Let's go through an example to see how infrastructure as code can solve problems three, four, and five. Timmy has been pretty good at keeping up with technology, and after some research, he finds that there are several tools out there that will allow him to create infrastructure as code. Some of these tools include Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, Google Cloud Deployment Manager, Microsoft Azure Resource Manager, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, etc. Timmy, along with his team, decide that Terraform is the tool for them. Poopy Inc. now wants to have a second staging environment for some reason. With Terraform, they write code in a file that defines all of the infrastructure they need for their production and staging environments to run. Because we now have code that knows how the staging environment is set up and built, creating the second staging environment is simply a matter of sending this code to a cloud provider. Once the code is sent to a cloud provider, the cloud provider will start the creation of a thousand new computers in the exact same way as we have it in production in a matter of seconds. A few minutes later, a full new infrastructure will have been built for this second staging environment. If Poopy Inc. wanted to, they could create 100 new staging environments in the blink of an eye instead of having to wait months and having to spend several thousands of dollars like they did in the 1990s. Well, it wouldn't happen quite in the blink of an eye, but you get the idea. Let's analyze how problems three, four, and five are solved in the previous example. Problem number three, replicating environments. This one is solved because we were able to create a completely new environment like production in a matter of minutes. Problem number four, forgetting steps in the infrastructure configuration. This problem is solved because the configuration of all of the infrastructure was saved within the code file created by the engineers at Poopy Inc. Problem number five, Growing and scaling. This problem is solved because creating a new environment or adding new pieces to the Poopy Inc. infrastructure is as simple as adding a few new lines of code. After all these changes, Poopy Inc. is saving tons and tons of cash through infrastructure as code. And the engineers at the company are much more happy and efficient. Isn't that freaking fantastic? There's a ton more benefits to infrastructure as code, such as faster deployments, more reliable deployments, deploying the infrastructure needed at the exact same time that the business logic is needed, more quickly figure out if your code does not work, etc. Alrighty, for now, that's the end of the story. I'm sure Poopy Inc. will tell us about other challenges they faced in the past and how they solved them, but for now, we should know what is infrastructure as code and how it solves a ton of problems. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope it was extremely useful. If you did find it helpful, please remember to hit, slap, destroy that like button. It helps this community, your community, to continue to grow and help other people around the world learn cool things. Also, remember to subscribe and share it with each of your friends. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. I know I will appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and never stop learning. See you next time.